Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Word of Faith Global Ministries today in the name of Jesus. We are going to continue on in our message, <clears throat> What in the World is Going On, Part 2. And so we'll get right into it in just a moment. But first, let us let you know what is going on here at Word of Faith. Well, praise the Lord. Let us start with a word of prayer today in Jesus name. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory and honor. We count it a privilege, Father, to stand before this holy nation, this royal priesthood. We thank you, Father, that you anoint these lips of clay to speak your word with boldness and clarity and accuracy as the very oracle of God. And I thank you, Father, that our teaching and preaching shall not be with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but it shall be in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and with power. And furthermore, Father, I thank you that the seed of the word that is sown into the hearts of the people today, it shall cause them to grow into trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that you would be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God, let's, uh, we're going to continue on in what we started talking about on, 
on Wednesday night, and that was what in the world uh, is going on. I had originally uh, called that uh, particular message, Stay Focused, but as I went on and got further into it, the Holy Spirit just really gave me what the title should have been, and that is actually uh, what in the world is going on, because that's what being focused for the believer is about, understanding and discerning what is going on in the earth, praise the Lord, at this day and at this time and at this hour. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. And so let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. And we're going to look at uh, chapter six, praise God. Ephesians chapter six. And of course, it says here in verse 10, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you are able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, then in, in the next verse, it says, Wherefore, take unto yourselves the whole armor of God, so that you will be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to do, you can stand there for. Praise God. Now, it goes on to list the very armor that we are supposed to be operating in, the armor of God. And I'm not teaching on the armor of God in this series, but I am pulling out one particular point, or one particular piece of the armor that uh, we need to be uh, sure about uh, in our lives, which really opens up to us and to our understanding what is taking place, what is going on in the earth, and what the spiritual atmosphere that is going on and taking place right now, praise God, not just here in the United States, but all around the world, in Europe, in, the, in, in South America, in, in Africa, everywhere, praise God, the enemy is trying to uh, pull out his last stop because he knows and understands that his time is short. And when we understand the spiritual atmosphere and recognize it, then we understand where we are in God's timing, and it should put us into a position where we are uh, more in line with what God has called us to do personally, as well as as a body, but personally what we're supposed to be doing, because what you are called to do personally fits into God's overall scheme and all his overall plan of attack against the enemy, and we already know that we win, praise God, amen? Praise the Lord. And so the key that I'm looking at is in verse 15. And it says that your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, the preparation. And that's a very key point. The preparation of the gospel. Glory to God. Amen. And so we need to make sure that that's what we are, that we are truly prepared in the gospel, because when we are prepared in the gospel, then it puts us in a position where we understand what is taking place in the earth, praise God. Gives us more insight, amen? And it helps us to fine tune what it is that we are supposed to do and begin to stay in our lane, stay in, our, in, our, in, in, in the vein in which God has called us specifically for what he has created you for, praise God, amen? In the book of Ephesians, where we are now, and I'm going to come right back here to, to uh, chapter 6. Go over to chapter 3. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Go over to chapter 3, and let's take a look at verse 10. Well, actually, I'm going to read verse 9. It says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery from the beginning of the world, has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. And this is the key part of the verse of this passage. Verse 10, to the intent that now, when? Right now. That right now unto the principalities and the powers. Now, we just looked in chapter 6 at principalities and powers rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. We just read through that scripture. 
And that particular scripture, as you should know, is, is referring to uh, the demonic forces that are trying to, that are trying to subvert and subdue and destroy the earth and the people in it. And he says here in verse 10, when we go back to chapter three, that it's to this intent. So in other words, this is the purpose that now unto or to, right, the principalities and powers in heavenly in heavenly places, okay, heavenly places. The demonic forces are headquartered in the atmospheric heavens, okay? Satan is called, one of his names is that he is the prince of the power of the air. And so of the atmospheric heavens just around the earth, is where the headquarters is of the demonic forces, the demonic hordes, okay? Their, head, their headquarters is not in hell or not in Hades. Hell, Hades is the actual word Hades translates into the word hell, okay? And so it is the, is, that's not the headquarters of, of the demonic forces. That is the prison in which, uh, people who have died in their sins and have not received Jesus Christ, those outlaw spirits, criminal spirits, praise God, uh, are then locked away until a time in the future when hell will be emptied out, a judgment will take place called the white throne judgment, and then both hell and death will be thrown into the eternal uh, place uh, the, their place of eternity, which is called the eternal lake of fire. Amen. Now, I'm not going to delve into all of that, but that's the that's the timeline of how all that takes place. Amen. The sequence or the order of it, according to the word. And so it says here to the intent that these principalities who are in the heavenly places that they might be that might that it might be known by the church. The manifold, that word manifold means many-sided or multifaceted. The many-sided or multifaceted knowledge and wisdom of God, the very wisdom of God. Now, he's talking about that this is going to happen through you and I, the church. Amen? Because we are the church, right? Not through the church organization, but through the church organism, because the church is a living organism. And so God's intent is that he wants to show through the church. Now, not just the group or the congregation of the church. Yes, through the congregation, but also through the individual person. That when they are in the place where God has them, their anointing, their purpose, and their gift and talent and grace and calling lines up with what God has called for that entire body to be able to do and to walk in and to carry out. Glory to God. And so it's to his intent. And notice that this was done when you look back in verse 9. He set this up back before the beginning of the world. So this has been God's plan all along, understanding that Adam or in the representation of Adam as mankind would fall and that man would find themselves in a very dire situation, completely cut off from God. All right. And so now it's his intent and all this is done through Jesus Christ, right? Because it can only be done through Jesus Christ. You know, if, if you're a believer and you're out there and you're trying to do these things apart from Jesus Christ and you are in error, okay? I'm letting you know right now, you are in error because it can only be done through Jesus, amen? And it's gotta be what it is that God has placed in you, wired you and called you to do, praise the Lord, that will allow you to walk in those things and, 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 and get that wisdom from God to flow through you and from you so that these principalities and powers will recognize it. In other words, God's intent is to show you off to the demonic forces. And therefore, watch this, if, he, if he's showing you off to the demonic forces, then he is showing you off also to the men and women in the earth that these demonic forces are in control of or are, 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 are leading or are guiding or are controlling, amen? So that, mean, that means that men will see what it is that you are doing, and as they see that, they will then begin to see wisdom that they have not seen before, 
and they'll have no other choice but to recognize that it must be coming from a different source. And when you start talking to them about Jesus, start talking to them about the kingdom of God, then they'll recognize the Holy Spirit will woo them in, bring them into the kingdom, or at least they will have the opportunity to come into the kingdom before this whole thing wraps up because it is on a fast track. The earth is on a fast track to the rapture of the church, the next the next big cataclysmic event in the earth. Amen. That's going to take place in the earth. I believe it's going to be even bigger than, uh, than the flood. And that was a major event, the flood of Noah. Okay. This is going to be a, a super major event that's going to take place in the earth. And it's going to catch everyone unawares, at least those who do not know or are not looking for his appearing, they're going to be caught unaware. All right. Jesus talked about that in the parable of the 10 virgins. They were fine. He was there. Those are supposed to be people who were invited. Amen. They were invited to the, to the marriage supper or to the wedding feast, just like we are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb. But within those who are invited, half of them were playing around, didn't take things seriously and ended up having the door shut on them when it was time for them to go. So therefore, they didn't make it. And that is a strong point that we need to understand right now where we are because there are believers who are playing around, not taking these things seriously from the word of God. And when it, when it hits, it will be like a thief in the night and they will be completely caught unaware. And then we'll have to now deal with what is taking place in the earth for the next at least three and a half years before there is another opportunity for them to be raptured away out of the earth. Praise the Lord. And so it's God's intent and purpose to show you off. So God has a purpose and intent for you in that. Now let's go back to chapter six. We see here again in verse 15 that your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, Holy Spirit is telling us through Paul, that we should be prepared in the gospel. The gospel, of course, is the good news. The good news is about the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. The operation, the place, the royalty, the authority of the kingdom of God. Okay, that's what, that's what it's about. Hallelujah. And we're supposed to live, operate, act like we are in that realm of authority. And it is in that realm of authority which supersedes the world system which Satan has set up. Amen. It overrides it. It supersedes it. Okay. It takes authority over it when we who are the people who are in the earth with the authority to do so, we're Jesus boots on the ground. When we stand in that authority, then we can make things happen. We can cause things to change, not out of our own selves, but we can do it because we are in Christ Jesus and we are part of the kingdom of God. So that means we are actually on an assignment to earth from God in order to bring into manifestation what is taking place in heaven. Wednesday, I mentioned the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done where on earth, just like it is where at in heaven. And so when we look as believers and see that the things in the earth that are taking place do not line up with what's going on in heaven, well, how do we figure that out? Well, we look and we read what the word of God says, because God's mindset and his purpose and his plan and his pursuit is all right in this book. It has been written because Jesus is the word. So it has been written for us to be able to read and see it, understand it, gain wisdom from it, and then walk in it and then move forward in what God has for the people of this planet, as well as for you and I, amen? Because change is going to come, not because some politician runs his campaign and says, you know, change is coming, change is coming, change is coming. Well, what kind of change? Nobody thought about asking the question, what kind of change are you talking about? <laughs> amen? No, we're talking about change from God's point of view, the changing uh, into the kingdom of God. 
all right? And so we're supposed to operate from that level. So we're supposed to be prepared in with the gospel, prepared with the gospel of peace. Glory to God. Now, that means we have to be students of the word. In order to be prepared in the gospel, you have to be a student. You know, you, you're not going to be able to just read a chapter a day and think that you're prepared. No, that's like taking vitamins. Keeps what's already operating, keeps it fine-tuned and tuned up. Okay, now I'm talking about real study in the Word, where you go line by line, you get your notebook, you get your pad, amen? Maybe you get a few other people, and you guys go through and di dissect what the Word of God says. That's study in the Word, being involved in some type of systematic study of the Word of God, where you are almost like you're back in college. And I'm not talking about study on a high school level, a st study like that, I'm talking about talking about study on a college level or on a university type level. Now, I'm not saying go get it to some seminary somewhere. No, I'm not saying that at all, all right? Because the majority of seminaries are going to teach the Holy Ghost out of you. They're going to teach you to walk in religion and not walk in faith. Amen? Praise the Lord. I'm talking about a, a systematic study from a in a system that is born out of the Word, a system that is that point to the Jesus that flows with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. It'll give you revelation knowledge and understands that the church is supposed to be built on revelation knowledge from God. So as knowledge of God's word is revealed, that's what the church is built on. That's what you and I are supposed to build our lives on. And that is the revelation from the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Now, let's go over to... Um, praise God. Let's go over to Matthew. If you want to go to Matthew 24, as a matter of fact, let's go to Matthew 24 and also Luke 21 simultaneously. Okay. We're going to look, I'm going to be flipping back and forth between these two passages of scripture. Matthew 24. We're talking about what in the world is going on. And we see all these doctrines of devils and seducing spirits moving upon men to bring forth ideas and ideologies that can that consistently go against the word of God it should we should recognize it and be able to recognize it but sad to say many believers have taken the attitude where well, that doesn't concern me oh it concerns you all right because Jesus said we're supposed to occupy until he returns that means we're supposed to be busy in doing the things of God in whatever vein or area in which or niche, if I could use that term, that God has, has created for you to walk in. Amen. Now, don't think that everybody, that every believer is supposed to be uh, um, preaching the word from a pulpit. Amen. No, you preach the word with your lifestyle and you also preach the word in the area that God has given you to walk in. Amen. Some of you are entrepreneurs and that is your area of that is your mission field. That is your pulpit area, regardless of what part of what type of entrepreneurial endeavor you might be in. Praise God. God going to use you in that. Why? Because keep in mind. What we looked at in Ephesians 3.10, that is, is his intent to show the principalities and the powers, his many-sided wisdom, multifaceted wisdom, wisdom in every area of life. Does an entrepreneurship cover some areas of life? Does an education cover some areas of life? Does it the medical profession cover some areas of life? Amen. Doesn't all these different things uh, that have to do with, with man's existence, right? God has wisdom for it. <coughs> he has wisdom for every area. So where God may have you in a certain area, then that's where you need to be getting all of your wisdom and insight and expertise and move in that so that you can bring forth the kingdom of God into that area and have that operation just like the operation is in heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's not going to happen if you are not serious about the word of God. 
Jesus also told us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? The things that the Gentiles seek. Everything that man is, is trying to uh, search for, everything he's trying to acquire, God will give it to you as you make the word of God first place in your life. Hallelujah. As you esteem it and as you walk in it, okay? Now, we should be in uh, Matthew chapter 24 and also in, Ma in, in Luke chapter 21. Praise God. Now, we're going to look at two sets of scriptures that are dealing with the same thing. Amen? Now, keep in mind a little rule here. And it, when you start seeing things multiple times, then it is very important. And it's very important for you to realize and understand and get knowledge and wisdom of. Amen? Now, here in Matthew chapter 24, I'm going to start at the very verse 1. It says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And so they were talking about the magnificence of the temple. Now, I touched on a little bit of this uh, during, the, uh, during Holy Week because this is actually taking place during the last week of Jesus' life, amen, where he is giving out some very, very important things because he knows he's about to leave, and so he is leaving his disciples with some very important information that they are going to need, amen? Normally when a person moves to, uh, makes a move or leaves an area or leaves something, and they're going to be gone for some time, they tell their loved ones, they give them some last minute advice, amen? How many of you have had children who've gone off to college? And as they've gone off to college, you had a little talk with them and you gave them some, some really important advice. You didn't give them a whole range of advice. You gave them what you believe to be the most important things that they would need to go stepping up, as it were, on their own. You gave them the most important things. And so this is what Jesus was doing, doing during the last uh, period of his life, amen, in the last week. And so he, so they, so, so they want to show Jesus the temple. And in verse 2, Jesus says this, See ye not these things, all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be here one stone upon, there shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. In other words, he told them, guess what? You see all these beautiful buildings you're talking about, but you know what? All this stuff is going to be destroyed. There's not going to be anything left. Every building you see is going to be torn down. Okay, now Jesus was prophesying to them right there that what was going to take place uh, from this point in time in 70 AD, roughly about 30 or 40 years after Jesus' death, that uh, Titus would come in, the Roman leader Titus would come in and he would basically sack Jerusalem and destroy the temple and tear everything down because of an uprising that would take place from the Jews against the Roman tyranny, which they were under. And so Jesus is telling them this. And then in verse three, it says, and he's, he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? Okay, tell us when these things shall be. Now he's referring, they're referring directly to the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, even though they don't know that's what he's, that, that's what he's prophesying. That's why they're coming to him to ask him. But also there's another question here that they ask, and they say, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they did have an understanding that he was getting ready to go, Okay, and so they wanted to know what was going to be a sign of the end of the world because they were equating the destruction of a temple with the end of the world. Okay, but you're talking about, but it's actually two different things that's happening here. So let's go on to verse four. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. He's giving them point by point, things to look for in the quote-unquote last days. Amen. Jesus will call it in verse 8, the beginning of sorrows. Okay? So you're talking about the beginning of sorrows. 
And so let's read on, starting back at verse 5. It says, For many shall come into my name, saying I, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must, must, must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Glory to God. Look at the list of things that he said would be taking place. Now, let's delineate between what's taking place and what he says here in verse 5 and 6 and what he detailed in, verses, in verse 7. Let's go back to 5. For many shall come in my name. So this is what he says. Actually, in verse 4, he says, take heed, pay attention. Okay, you out there, pay attention. Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, one of the ways in which you are not going to be deceived, the key way to not be deceived, is to have wisdom and understanding from the Word of God. Okay, wisdom, understanding from the Word of God will will put you in a position where you're not going to be deceived by all the things that are taking place and are coming on the earth, okay? And this, this pestilence that the world is dealing with now, Wuhan, China, COVID-19 virus, whatever you want to call it, amen, the flu, high strain of the flu, okay? All these things you will recognize when you have wisdom from God, from his word, as to what was going to be taking place. Now, again, verse 5, For many shall come in my name, and shall say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Okay? So he said, you're going to hear about wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled. In other words, don't get upset about all these things that you hear. Now, there are many believers who are getting upset. There are, there are a, lot of, a lot of Christians who really don't know what to do. I mean, they're just like a lot of people in the world that don't have a clue as to, to, as to what's going on. There's a lot of believers that really don't have a clue as to what's going on. Let me tell you what they do. They then bury themselves in, in uh, let me say this, they're burying themselves in what it is that they do so they don't have to deal or look at what is going on in the earth or they, they, uh, uh, they succumb to the entertainment systems of the world, right? And then begin to live in this world of, of Hollywood entertainment and things of this nature so that they can turn away from what is really going on in the world. That's how they will cope and try to deal with the things that are coming on the earth. But, but us as, as true believers, we're supposed to deal with what is coming on the earth and continue to bring forth the gospel in whatever area God has called us to and how we are to do it. Amen? Praise the Lord. There's some hows that we're supposed to do it, and you got to find out how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, you can go out and you can talk. Everybody's supposed to share it with someone and do that. Yes, that's true. That's the first love. In the book of Revelations, the first church that Jesus, Jesus dealt with in the letters was a church at Ephesus, and that was a church who had gotten away from its first love. They had gotten away from Jesus, right? And when you uh, get away from Jesus, then you'll stop talking about Jesus. You'll stop sharing Jesus. Amen. And that's what they did in that church. And so he told them to repent, turn around and get back to the first love. Hallelujah. And so we see here back again in verse six, he should hear of wars and rumors of wars. Well, how many of you have done, have heard that? You hear that all the time. Okay. You hear about wars and rumors of wars all around the world. Hallelujah. Then it says, see that your heart, see that you not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet. So we get wisdom from the word of God that what we see taking place in the earth is not the end. Now notice what this, this is one key word in here that's very important that we got to recognize because it will then, in, in, in a lot of cases, change how we pray. 
It says, for all these things must come to pass. Must come to pass. Okay? In other words, if this has to happen. Okay? No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No turning around. This has to happen. Why? Because the end is not yet. He said these things that do happen, right, they must come to pass. Recognize that the end is not yet. So what are these things that must come to pass? In verse 7, nations shall rise against nation. Nation does not necessarily mean a nation of people. It's referred to a governmental nation of people, I should say. Like the United States is a nation, so that nation of people coming against another nation. That's not what nations is referring to. Nations is referring to ethnic groups, ethnicity. As a matter of fact, this is where this word in the Greek is the word ethnos, where we get the word ethnic from. How many of you recognize in today's world that there is a great furor about ethnic eth, about ethnicity? Amen? Ethnicity, all right? People groupings, that's what this means. Nations, groups of people rising against each other. That's what's going on. The enemy has been for years, decades, hundreds of years, been trying to get, have been, been trying to stoke the fires of ethnic unrest all around the world. All around the world. Okay? So, he says, these are nations of Rascus nations, so these are some of the signs that will take place. Now, you notice he said that prior to this, that the end is not yet. So what we see taking place now is not speaking to the end. Then it says, kingdom against kingdom. Now you're talking about governmental areas. So you're talking about like, like uh, North Korea, South Korea. There, you know, there are always, there's always tension there. North Korea, South Korea, okay? Russia, Ukraine, those are governmental uh, entities, kingdoms, right? Coming against each other, one trying to take over, one trying to attack another, okay? They are, there's tense situations going on, okay? China, just about everybody else in the world. China and the United States, big contention, going on, okay, Iran and Israel and Turkey and Israel and all these, these, these kingdom players, right, who have a, who play a major role in biblical prophecy that has not yet come to pass, amen, but the building blocks are taking place. Now, when you have wisdom and insight and you are prepared in the gospel, then you will begin to recognize all of these things and then your heart will not be troubled, like Jesus said. Let not your heart be troubled, okay? Because these things must need be. So you know, you recognize that these things are going to be taking place. And so since they're going to be taking place, and Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled, okay, well, if Jesus said it, I'm standing with what Jesus said, so I'm not going to get caught up in worry. I'm not going to get caught up in fear, I'm not going to have anxiety attack because of what I see taking place in the earth and upon the earth. All right? Because I'm trusting in Jesus and what Jesus said, I'm trusting in the word. He is the word. Glory to God. Now, that should be the attitude of the believer. But if the believer is not prepared in the gospel of peace, it's going to be difficult for him to have that attitude. Because every time something comes around, every time something swirls or happens or, or, or jumps up, they're going to get over. The enemy is going to try to hit them with fear. And if they're not solid and prepared in the gospel, then fear can take them over. And that's why I've seen a lot of Christians, heard about a lot of believers uh, who have got caught up in fear because of these things and then made decisions based on that fear. Hallelujah. Let's read on. Kingdom against kingdom, there shall be. Okay, now he lists the things that list a he gives a list of things that are gonna happen. Okay. There are gonna be famines and pestilences. Famines and pestilences. Now, famines is basically a lack, a lack thereof. Okay, a lack of provision, praise the Lord. Famines. Glory to God. 
We've seen that throughout time. We've seen that throughout our lifetimes. Uh, I've seen it in my lifetime. Many of you have seen it in your lifetime. Some of you may be watching a little bit younger. You may not have seen as much as others have seen. That's why you need to gain wisdom from those who are older than you or your elders, okay, young folk, because you haven't seen what they've seen. All you know is what you've seen in the short time you've been on the earth. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Or what you have maybe learned in classroom situations and things of that nature. Or maybe what you have even watched uh, on YouTube and videos about history and things of that nature, okay? And you can learn a lot that way. Praise God. Amen. But it all has to be tempered by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is major and it's key in what I'm talking about here right now, understanding what in the world is going on. Okay. Now, people say that because they don't know. I'm saying it because we're supposed to know. All right. Okay. So. Famines and pestilence. This is what our pestilence is. Pestilence is sickness, disease, things of that nature. Hello, we are actually been living over the last years, a few months, that very thing, pestilence. Now, how you live through that pestilence determines, is going to be determined by how prepared you are in the gospel. Amen? And watch this. And then there are earthquakes. How many of you know we've seen all kind of earthquakes taking place? I mean, there are earthquakes happening every day, all day long at various levels, various sizes of tremors taking place in the earth. Why? Because the earth is groaning. It is groaning and will continue to groan until the manifestation of the sons of God takes place. So there's going to be earthquakes from now on. Are you listening to me? These things are going to be taking place from now on. What did Jesus say? Let not your heart be troubled. Why? Because you have a, Jesus had made a way of escape for you. Amen. So what we need to be doing is being focused in on, on if we don't know, finding out what God has placed in us. Amen. Jeremiah 33, 3, those things that are in you, which are fenced in, hidden that you don't know, don't recognize, don't even see, cannot distinguish, right? Have no knowledge of that he that God has placed in you, wired in you to walk in. Amen. If you don't know, that's what you need to be focusing in on. Finding out what God has created you, wired you to do. If you do know, then you need to be continually building up in that and letting God give you more wisdom, insight, and let him lay out your tactics and let him lay out your plan for what it is that he wants you to do and how you are supposed to do it and then stay on that course. Amen? There's the acceptable, there's the good, and there's the perfect will of God. We need to be getting, from, getting away from the acceptable, getting away from the good, and moving toward what? The perfect will of God in our lives. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read on. And so earthquakes in diverse places, and then Jesus then summed it all up and gave us a time frame of what we should be calling this era. He called it the beginning of sorrows. So that's exactly where we are, according to the word, the beginning of sorrows. Amen. And the beginning of sorrows actually didn't Moves us in, moves us toward the catching away of the church so that the earth can move into the last seven years of the Jewish time clock, which has not yet started. That means that Israel is very key to what is going on in the earth. And sad to say, you have a lot of quote unquote Christians who have been taught and been taught a doctrine of devils regarding Israel and that the church, and that basically what they've been taught is that Israel has been now shut out and that the church has replaced Israel as God's people. No, guess what? We haven't replaced nothing. We haven't replaced Israel. Are you kidding? The book of Romans tells us that we have been engrafted in. Amen. <laughs> that Israel is still the apple of God's eye. Everything that is taking place prophetically 
is wrapped around Israel. All right. Israel becomes the key, one of the key things that we should be looking at. And if you are prepared in the gospel of peace, then that's what you'll be doing, watching what's taking place with Israel. Because there are things that are coming, and more than likely before the rapture of the church, that affect Israel directly and is going to affect the world, but are prophetic events that have not yet manifested. But guess what? The building blocks are being set. The stage is being set. Okay? All the mics have been set up. The lights are up. The cameras are being set up. Everything is being set up for this, for this these manifestations to take place. And when you have, when you are prepared in the gospel, you will begin to recognize how things are moving and how things are being set up. Go to Luke chapter twenty-one. Glory to God. Luke chapter twenty-one. Praise His mighty name. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, you got a lot of leadership on this earth think they're Lord, but guess what? They're not Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. You have to, praise the Lord. We'll get to it in a minute. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Okay, are we there in Luke chapter 21? And let's, uh, Let's take a look at verse 5. Now, here we are looking at basically the same thing we just read in Matthew, but we're going to take a look at Luke's account of it. So you got two accounts. So it means you got to look at both of them, study both of them, so you can get the uh, additional information that one may not cover, and therefore you get the complete picture of what God is trying to get across to you and to I and to myself. Okay, verse 5, Luke 21. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which you behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now again, he is prophesying what, he already, what we already looked at in Matthew chapter 24, right? In verse 2, he's saying the same thing here. So he's talking about the same event. Again, he's prophesying that, that the temple and Jerusalem would be sacked. Titus would come in in 70 AD, Roman army, destroy Israel. All right, verse 7. And they asked him, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will be there when these things shall come to pass? So they said, okay, when is this going to take place? And can you give us a sign? as to what's going to go, what's going to take place. Can you give us a sign? Now, that's very important because that was basically uh, reiterated in both uh, Matthew and here, again, as we see in, in Luke. Now, I'm going to keep, keep your finger here in Luke, and I'm going to go, oh, back, I'm going to go over to Mark chapter 11. Praise the Lord. Just being led by the Spirit to go over to Mark chapter 11 because it fits right here in the Holy Spirit. I didn't have it in my notes. The Holy Spirit has just brought it to me, so I'm going to take us to it. Praise God. And let's take a look at Mark 11 and verse 11. Now, of course, Mark 11 is very, very well known among Christian circles because of uh, Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, and 25, amen, and 26. Probably known more so for 23 and 24 than 25 and 26, which talks about have faith in God, which you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, da 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 da. Okay, we're familiar with that. Now, what pre preceded that was when Jesus spoke to the fig tree. And he spoke to the fig tree and cursed the fig tree. Okay? And the fig tree died, and the disciples saw it. And then he went in to teach them about Mark 11, uh, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Okay? And so we heard about the fig tree. Verse 11, and Jesus entered into Jerusalem in the temple, and when he had looked around about upon all the things, and now even time was come, he went out into Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. 
And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast them out that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations, called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it, and saw how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter calling to remembrance, uh, saying unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree, which thou curseth, is withered away. Then he answered and said, Have faith in God. So then he began to teach them. Again, this is in the last week of his life. A very important lesson about speaking and about saying and about believing. But more importantly in that, then that was in verse 25 about forgiving. Because verses 23 and 24, all your speaking and all your commanding is not going to work if you don't have any forgiving. If you're not forgiving, praise the Lord. Amen. You got to be forgiving. Okay, now let's go back over to Luke. I'm going to come back to the fig tree in just a moment. Okay, something very important. I had to read that first because it's a very important lesson in which Jesus taught about the fig tree. Now, verse, uh, verse 6, no, no, verse 7. And he asked, saying, Master, but when shall these things be, and what signs shall there be when these things come, up, come to pass? And he said in verse 8, Take heed that you be not deceived, but many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draws near, go ye not therefore after them. So now Jesus is saying the same thing, but in a little bit different manner, the way in which Luke recorded it. He said, the time draws near, go ye not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, wars and commotions, he said, be not terrified. Right? There was a lot of terror when 9-11 hit the United States that day. There was a lot of terror which, which rippled right through the, through the country. Amen? He said, be not terrified for these things. And here again, you see this same phrase. These things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. So when we see these things taking place, these disasters, these commotions, these wars, he said, do not be terrified here in Luke. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. And it was recorded, don't let your heart be troubled in the book of Matthew. So don't get, don't get caught up in worry and fear. Don't let fear grip you. The spirit of fear will try to grip you when these things happen. That's part of Satan's MO, right? He moves on men to bring things to pass, steal, kill, destroy. And then once he causes his event to take place, then he, he, he comes behind it with fear to try to grip you. And we have seen over the past year, fear grip an entire planet. And people make decisions based on the fear. Okay? Glory to God. Fear of something that, is, that, that hasn't even happened. Glory to God. Amen? Okay, now, let's look at verse 10. And he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse or different places. Now, when you're talking about earthquakes, then you're talking about the movement of the earth. And so when you're talking about the movement of the earth, it causes atmospheric changes. And so therefore, you're going to get things like hurricanes. You're going to get things like tsunamis. You're going to get things like sinkholes all of a sudden appear in various places, huge sinkholes. Okay. You're going to have structural 
uh, foundational structural issues with buildings that men have built. Okay, you're going to have all these types of things taking place, right? During this time that Jesus called the beginning of sorrows where we live right now. Now, God had you born for this time. So if God had you born for this time, he has equipped you with what to do and how to handle what's taking place in this time. And you get that understanding when you are prepared in the gospel of peace, when your feet are shod in it. Again, your feet, your place of stability, your place of standing, your place of mobility, right, is in your feet. Glory to God. That's how you get around. Amen. That's how you move. That's how you stand strong. That's how you maintain your balance. In a world that's out of balance, you maintain your balance because your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited about this. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's continue on. Great earthquakes in verse 11 shall be in diverse places, famines, again mentioned, and pestilences. Now, there have been several pandemics throughout time, recent time, last couple hundred years. Swine flu, Spanish flu, bubonic plague, all these different types of things. Amen. It took place in the earth, right? And now we're dealing with this, with this, this latest one. We've had Ebola in different parts of the earth. We had other things, SARS. Actually, this COVID-19 is a SARS. I remember when they first came out with SARS about, oh, it must have been five years ago, SARS hit. Amen. And when those things happen, when they come out and when the world begins to speak those things, then what should come out of your mouth is what the word of God says about you and about healing, about you and about pestilences. Now, if you don't know what the word of God says about you and pestilence, then I would suggest that you go and meditate on Psalm 91 because pestilence and disease is mentioned three times in that insurance policy, what I like to call it, for the believer. And it covers you from all pestilence. It covers you from all sickness, from all diseases, right? You are covered because of the blood of Jesus and because he carried it for you on the cross. So there's nothing that man can really do that's going to be better for you than what God's word can do in these areas of diseases. Can somebody say amen out there? Okay. <clears throat> Pessimists, watch this. This is something that wasn't in what Matthew's recorded. And fearful sights, fearful sights and great signs, there shall, shall there be from heaven. Hmm? Great signs shall there be from heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he's talking about now signs from heaven. Hmm. That means that there's going to be some things that are taking place above the earth that we'll be able to see as signs from heaven or signs in the heaven during this time of the beginning of sorrows. Or we will be hearing about things that are that scientists are saying that are going to come upon the earth because they have studied these types of I could say interstellar phenomena, as it were. All right? But you and I, as believers, prepared in the gospel of peace, our feet shod will not get out of balance when the rest of the world gets out of balance. We remain constant because the word is constant. We remain consistent because the word is consistent. Because without the word in your life, then you have no consistency. Without the word in your life, you have there's nothing, nothing constant, amen, about you. There is nothing steadfast. You are imbalanced. And if you're imbalanced, you're subject to lose your footing at a shaking. Amen? Hallelujah. There's a lot of believers who've lost their footing. Now, they're regaining it, but they've lost their footing. Now, watch this. 
He said that these things are going to be happening during this time. So we have experienced one that shook up a whole lot of folks, shook up the whole world. But is that going to be the end? I dare not think so, not based according to what Jesus said. So that means that if you had worked, if you weren't prepared, let that be a wake-up call. If you weren't prepared, get prepared now. Start getting prepared at the highest level you possibly can, right? With the most fervor that you possibly can in the gospel of peace. In other words, get in that word so you'll know exactly what it is you're doing, what's going on. You know what in the world is going on, not asking the question what in the world is going on. Now let's read on as I finish this up for today. Let's go over to the same chapter, verse 20, chapter 21. Let's turn to verse 13. No, let's go to verse 14. Now watch this. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. Wow. That's very important because if we are going to discern the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere, discerning of spirits is a gift of the Holy Spirit that is mentioned in, in 1 Corinthians among the other gifts, with word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, miracles, okay, discerning of spirits, right? Discerning of spirits is in most people, when they hear that, they think of being able to see into the spirit realm, which is the world realm, look the real world, looking into the dimension where God lives in, looking into the dimension where you have the principalities and the powers and the rules of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness and high places, looking into that dimension, being able to see into it, right? But also, it means discerning of spirits or discerning of the spiritual atmosphere, right, that is taking place in the earth. And there is a definite spiritual atmosphere going on in the earth. And when you're able to do that because you are prepared in the gospel of peace, when you're able to do that, then it, then it accentuates your ability not to be terrified, your ability not to get caught up in anxiety, your ability not to let your heart be troubled by the things that you see happening and coming on the earth now and in the near future. Hallelujah. And all of these things point to the fact that the church is soon to be caught away or raptured up out of here. But we have a lot of things to do and a lot of word to minister and share and a lot of things to get out that's in us out into the earth so people can so that God can use it to call people into the kingdom before that happens. Come on, somebody. That's why it's important that you are moving into your perfect will of God, coming out of the good will of God and coming out of your acceptable will. Get into the perfect will. Hallelujah. Look again, verse 14. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. There are going to be times when you're going to have to speak or do something, and it's not going to be something you sat down and put together yourself. It's going to be coming straight from the Holy Spirit. He's going to download it into you. Amen? For he will give, he will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. He's going to give you a mouth and he's going to give you wisdom. What do we read in Ephesians 3.10? This is his intent to show you off to the principalities and the powers so that his many sided of wisdom can come out of you. He's going to give you that mouth. Now don't let that mouth just, don't put that, that scripture in a box and just think that the mouth, the words is coming out of your mouth. Amen. Because what does a mouth do? One of the things that a mouth do, it allow it, a mouth does is that it allows for words to come out for communication to take place. Amen. 
Communication can take place in various by various means. Communication can take place because you wrote a book and you didn't try to figure it out. You just wrote down what the Holy Spirit dropped in your spirit. Amen. Uh, that mouth could be a uh, music that God has given you or a song that God has given you or a lyric that God has given you. It could be an idea, an invention that God will use as the mouthpiece to speak to the world. Amen. You can be a janitor. Watch this. You can be a janitor. Now, most folks, when they hear the word janitor, they think of somebody who is low education and all this, and that's the only thing that they can do. Amen. But watch this. Person could be a janitor. Holy Spirit could drop in them, right? Look at verse 14. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before you answer, for I will give you a mouth. God can give that janitor a mouth, which will end up turning into an idea because of the area that he is working in, right? That will cause a revolution in throughout the entire planet in the way things are done in cleaning and sanitation and things of that nature. One idea, and God will use it as the mouth. So when they come to that janitor, who is now a multimillionaire because God has blessed him because he caught on to what God was getting him to do, right? And they come to him and say, well, how did you come up with this? Well, I didn't come up with this. What do you mean you didn't come up with it? Well, I had it settled in my heart before that I'll not meditate before what the answer is, so I wasn't trying to figure this out. I just did what God gave me, what the Holy Spirit said to me, and I use this, and it's coming out of the mouth of this invention. Anybody catching on to what I'm talking about here? Amen? Hallelujah. That's why you got to get into that perfect will of God. Be moving towards it. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Let's give God some praise. Father, we praise you. We thank you and we give you glory today. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, to sow the seed of the word into the hearts of your people today, that they'll have a desire and a hunger and a thirst to be prepared in the gospel of peace so that the perfect will that you have created for them shall be manifested in their life towards this lost and dying world, bringing many into the kingdom of God. And so we give you the praise and give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you've been watching today and you're not saved, you're not born again today, come into the kingdom of God. Jesus has gone to make a, a place for you. And all he wants you to do is accept it. But to accept that place, you must accept him. So there is no other way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. He is the doorway. He can't get in through Buddha. can't get in through all of the 100,000 gods in India. You can't get in through all of the, uh, the, the, the false gods of of, of, of whatever religions that are out there, Hare Krishna, all the rest of them. Amen. You can't get in through all the old false Egyptian gods that many have been, have, have been seduced into. Can't get in through communism. You can't get in through man's systems of political operation. You can only get in through Jesus Christ. That is the doorway to the Father and into the kingdom of God. So if you're out there and you're watching and you're not saved today, you're not born again, you want to receive Jesus Christ into your heart, I want to pray with you right now. And I want you to pray this prayer after me. I want you to just lift your hands up to the Father. Just lift your hands up just like this. Close your eyes and just say this. Just say, Heavenly Father, I want to receive Jesus Christ into my heart and into my life. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe that you raised him from the dead. I believe that he died for me and carried all of my sin on that tree in Calvary. I believe that he took my place in hell, that, I would not, that, I, that it would be foreign to me. I believe that he is now risen and seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord Jesus, 
I confess you with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. Lord Jesus, come into my heart now. Save me now. I repent of sin and I turn away from it. Lord Jesus, thank you. And I praise you, Father, that I am right now born again. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, you just didn't mouth the words, but you actually meant it from your heart. You believe what you said and praise the Lord. You are part of the, of the kingdom of God. And right now, the word of God tells us that when someone gives their life to the Lord, that the angels of heaven rejoice. So there's a celebration taking place in heaven for you right now in Jesus name. Now, I want to encourage you and instruct you to find yourself a good church that's going to teach you the word of God, train you in the word of God, encourage you in the word, amen? Even put you in position to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only, glory to God, amen? Find your good church. Jesus said that every sheep needs a shepherd, praise the Lord, amen? And so if that's you, you need to find a good church home, glory to God, amen? If you wanna connect with us here in Word of Faith Global Ministries, and glory to God, and you can just contact us in the name of Jesus, amen? And we will, we will contact you back. We'll pray with you further if necessary. Even explain what it is that may have just taken place or happened in your life, glory to God, so that you will be crystal clear about those things, amen? Just shoot us an email, praise the Lord. We'll respond back to you in Jesus' name, amen? If you want to be a part of this, this ministry virtually, you can do that as well. Just contact us at that email address, address and let us know, glory to God, and we'll return, uh, we'll, we'll contact you back in Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Now, glory to God, it's offering time, hallelujah, praise God. If you are blessed by the message today and you desire to sow seed into the kingdom of God through the good ground here at Word of Faith, then you can do so, praise God, but one of those various methods that you see there on the screen right now in Jesus' name, praise the Lord. You can use our PayPal, go to our website, or use the ministry cash app, glory to God, amen? Now, if you are a member of another church, then your tithe goes to your local church. That's where it belongs. It doesn't, you don't sow your tithe to us unless you're a member here, amen? But you sow to your local church or your home church, glory to God. You send an offering unto us, Praise the Lord. You can do that. The word of God says to give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure and pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men pour into your bosom. But with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured unto you again. Amen. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 6. And it says, But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Verse 8, very important. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. The Amplified reads it this way. God is able to make all grace, every favor, every earthly blessing abound towards you so that you have no lack, need no aid, but that you are thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at verse 10. It says, now he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food and will multiply, will multiply your seed sown and will increase the fruit of of your righteousness. Hallelujah. And so God is the God who gives up, who, who gives out increase and he multiplies and he will multiply your seed. So whatever it is that you are sowing, that's your seed. Excuse me. And as you sow that seed, God will multiply it and he will increase it if you do it as a cheerful giver, not grudgingly. Amen. But cheerfully, praise the Lord. And God is going to bless you tremendously and mightily in Jesus' name, according to his word, which I've just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 10. Praise God forevermore. 
Well, I trust that you have done what it is that you are going to do regarding your offering this morning. Let us lift it up to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus. Let us open our mouths and let us begin to worship God with our giving. And many of you are using electronic devices with it. Just hold up your phone, glory to God, or whatever it is you might be using. Let's repeat, just let's, let's get in agreement. You pray over your seed or over your offering, and I'll pray over the entire group. Father, I thank you and I praise you and I give you glory. Thank you, Father, as we sow seed into the kingdom of God through the good ground here at Word of Faith. We thank you, Father, that because of it, lives will be changed. People will be saved and filled with your precious Holy Spirit. Families brought back together, a city, a state, a nation, a world, one to the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity, Lord God, to be a blessing unto many in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you right now that your angels are released to go forth and bring our return unto us. For we have need of it for the kingdom of God's sake, as well as our own. And Father, furthermore, we thank you that because of the seed we sow, that we are gaining more wisdom, more insight from you as to the perfect will of God for our individual lives. That those things that are fenced in in us and hidden that we do not even recognize nor understand yet, that we have a revelation of it in Jesus' name. Begin to walk in it, not despising the small things. And so we thank you, Father, that, your, that this seed will meet any need. In Jesus' name, and all in agreement said, amen, amen, praise God forevermore. Glory to God. Well, thank you all for being on this morning with the Word of Faith Global Ministries in Jesus' name. Come back on again with us on, on uh, Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, praise God. Don't forget to also uh, check out Marketplace Monday. 6 a.m. conference call. We gave you the information earlier in the in, in the in the broadcast, but you can also come on at 4 p.m. on YouTube on the Women in Ministry TV broadcast. I'm gonna say that again. Women in Ministry TV broadcast. My wife has a has her ministry there on market called Marketplace Monday, where she ministers and teaches on handling business and entrepreneurship in the way God would have you to do it. And so praise God, come on in that. If you got a business, want to start a business, amen, then you want to be a part of this because she is giving out great information, sowing it into the hearts, into the lives of the people. Again, that's at 4 p.m. on the Women in TV Ministry broadcast on YouTube. And then you'll see it come on at 4 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Central Time for using you in the East Coast. That's going to be 5 p.m. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And also on Thursdays at 7 p.m., my wife will be ministering on healing. Glory to God. Amen. On YouTube at that same station, that same channel, I should say, the Women in T TV Ministry Broadcast. She'll be ministering at 7 Central and she'll be ministering on uh, uh, on healing, okay? The uncommon and unstoppable woman of God, dealing in healing and other subjects, but mainly on healing, praise the Lord, amen? So you want to tune in to that as well in Jesus' name, praise God, glory to God. Well, that's going to be it for today. I trust you were blessed by the word of God, glory to his name. We look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday. And hopefully you'll be on the other streams in which we've mentioned today in Jesus' name, being prepared for the gospel, with the gospel of peace in Jesus' name. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to his name.